All right, what is up, guys? In here for here, and welcome back to another movie review. And today we're going to be talking about Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, or just simply Aquaman Two. Um, I watched this movie about two weeks ago or something like that, and I forgot to make this video. <laughs> so I watched this movie in 2023, but I'm not recording it until 2024. So I apologize. That was my mistake. Um, but anyways, as we know, this is the last movie of the DCEU, um, so I'll be letting you guys know my personal opinion. Is it the best one? Is it better than the first one? Is it just another mediocre movie? Did it end on a high note, you know? So, if you enjoy this type of stuff, drop a like on this video, share this video, subscribe if you haven't already. I would appreciate it, and it's free. But without further ado, let's hop straight into it. Now, this movie is kind of strange, because in theory you would think it would be Batman or Superman or another Justice League movie to end the DCEU, but it's Aquaman that ends it, which is kind of weird. Um, regardless of what you say about the cast members or the first movie, the first movie was a success. It made over a billion at the box office domestically, so overall it was just a pretty successful movie. And I enjoyed it for what it was, man. I thought the movie was fun. I thought it was a good time. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Whereas with this one... I didn't really go into it with high hopes at all. Um, I was really just probably just kind of wait for it to just come out on streaming services. But my friend, he was like, hey, man, come join us at the movies, man. We're going to watch Aquaman 2. And I'm like, ah, I'll get out the house. I'll go do something. And I watched it. And overall, we enjoyed it. Um, it wasn't anything groundbreaking. It wasn't anything special. Um, like I said, it didn't really feel like a conclusion movie at all. It just felt like just another average generic superhero movie. And unfortunately, this movie, it's not quite performing as well as the first one did. And there's multiple reasons for that. Um, you could just simply say people are just kind of done with the DC movies at this point. Um, you could just say it was the whole Amber Heard controversy, everything like that. Or you could just say simply it's superhero fatigue, which is showing with the like new Marvel movies and things like that. Um, with the Marvels, for instance, which just didn't perform that well. Blue Beetle didn't perform that well. The Flash didn't either. Captain Marvel. I mean, Shazam, sorry. Like, it's just a lot of these superhero movies, they're just not quite performing as well as they used to. And that's why I'm thinking, like, it's just that superhero fatigue right now. Like, we're getting a new superhero movie, like, every month, every two months. So, it, it's a bit much at the moment. Now, I will say, I think this movie... It's serviceable. I think this movie is a solid watch. It's not the greatest superhero movie of all time, but it's far from the worst. Um, there's better options out there, but there's far worse that you can do than Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Um, <laughs> this movie has pros and cons. I do think that um, visually this movie looks really good, just like the first one, from the action and just the overall like water visuals. I think this movie does look good. Um, the action sequences were pretty cool between Aquaman and Black Manta. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but that's really about it in terms of positives for this movie. Um, <laughs> the negatives, I think, kind of outweigh the good, but not by much. Um, some of the negatives, I think that this movie, um, it has that humor, that, you know, that superhero movie humor. And a lot of the jokes in this movie just did not hit for me at all. Like, no one in the theater was, like, laughing at any of these jokes or anything. It was just, like, eh. Like, it felt more like secondhand embarrassment, if anything. And another negative for most people will be the screen time of Amber Heard. Um, lots of people were just, like, yo, just cut her out entirely, recast her. But she had a lot more screen time than I thought she would. I thought she was just going to have, like, five minutes of screen time. She's in a good amount of scenes in this movie. <laughs> And I know they touched on it online. They're like, hey, we understand what's going on. We're going to just condense her screen time by a lot. And it shows, but she still had a good amount of screen time in this movie. Um, so I don't know, man. It depends on who you are. If you support Amber Heard, you're going to be okay with it. If you don't, then you'll be a bit upset. Um, but no, man, I, like, I saw on like Twitter after the movie came out, there was a lot of people like... You know, maybe Amber ain't that bad. You know? <laughs> maybe she's redeeming herself, man. I don't know. Uh, you could just say those are like the horn dogs, the the guys in their mom's basements. Nothing better to do. Um, it, it just depends on who you ask, really. And something I want to touch on is it's kind of weird because you know, like when Black Adam underperformed, The Rock was kind of just like, ah, you know, it happens. 
not all, not every movie is going to perform that well. Then when Shazam and the uh, Fury of the Gods came out, even Zachary Levi was on like Instagram Live talking about, okay, oh, yeah, you know, go watch it. You know, if you want to go watch it, you don't have to. You know, I'm not going to beg you to watch it, but you should go watch it. You know, things like that. And Jason Momoa in an interview, he's like, not going to lie, man, the movie's not out yet, but it's not looking good, man. <laughs> so it's like, they've just like lost faith with the like DCEU. Um, so hopefully James Gunn can, you know, just redo everything, rebrand everything, make things better, hopefully. James Gunn, he has a pretty good track record. Um, so I do have faith in the man, but I don't know, man. At the moment, it just seems like superhero movies, they're just not hitting as hard as they used to. Um, with the exception of like Endgame and Far From Home, I mean, sorry, No Way Home, um, it just seemed like a lot of these superhero movies are just not quite hitting it like they used to, um, especially from the DC side of things. Personally, I thought Blue Beetle was pretty cool, but aside from that, like, I don't know. <sighs> Sad times for the superhero world. No, but I am glad that they, um, they kept Black Manta in this one. It's probably uh, Aquaman's most famous villain, so I'm glad that they at least kept him around. Um, they had this other villain in this movie. I, I, he wasn't that memorable. He really didn't do too much. His his defeat was very anticlimactic, so um, I don't even know what they were doing there. I will say that his design was kind of cool, and the, like the whole like icy atmosphere of the like movie was pretty cool. It was giving off um, God of War Ragnarok um, like vibes. Um, and I guess God of War 2018 as well. So I, I did like that. Um, but overall, there just wasn't too much to like about this movie. It wasn't dumpster fire. It wasn't trash. It's not a bad movie. It's just a very generic one. One that I'm not going to be wanting to watch again anytime soon. But, you know, if it's on in the background, I'll put it on. You know, I'll allow it. But, um, me and my friends, we did rank it all pretty much around the same. Solid 7 out of 10. Some people are going to give it a hard time, but it's at least a watchable movie. I'd give it a shot if you want to. Probably on streaming services, honestly. But a minute four, and I'm out. Peace.